sexy. Kindness is sexy. Yes. Hi, it's Mary Ellen O'Neill Maidley with KISS, Kindness is Sexy. And today I am with Jack and Darren from The Highwaymen. And, and we are talking about a drive that they're doing for people experiencing homelessness in Simcoe County and Toronto. This is a drive for collecting sleeping bags, correct? That's correct. And you're collecting them throughout Simcoe County and Toronto for those in need. And I just was wondering if you could tell me what it is that got you guys started. Why did you choose that particular drive? Well, Ray Ellen, it's, uh, it's a very touching, touching uh, feeling, I believe, because it's, uh, especially now with even COVID, you got so many people with, uh, what, do you, what do you want to call that? With uh, mental health issues. Mental health and issues and, and all other stuff. And you, you go look at it, it's in the, the Toronto area, the Woodbridge area, Sometimes it's even in your own home. You don't, you, don't, you know, you're talking Absolutely. to someone and then all that, per, you know, with the heat of the moment, the person doesn't want to be in the home and they're all of a sudden now they're forced on the street. And, and if you go look at Woodbridge has homeless person sleeping outside and he's sleeping in between the no frills and the, and the TD bank there. And if you go downtown Toronto, it's, it's open, between the COVID period, there is so much homelessness down on the street right now and the shelters, it's either they can't, keep up with the capacity or they close at three o'clock and and or two o'clock three o'clock in, in the morning so by the time these people now even get to the shelters they're not allowed in yeah so they rather be arrested and put into a jail cell or they fear that even if they were in, going to a shelter with all their belongings and stuff they're going to get they feel like they're going to get ripped off and stuff so they, they prefer to, to sleep on the outside of it all it's the one thing that i found is i worked with um the youth in barry I worked for one of the youth shelters there and the thing that upset me the most and scared me the most was the fact that there are children, I mean we're talking 14, 15, 16 year olds sleeping out in the cold all night long and all through the winter. And it's for exactly the reasons that you were saying there can be mental health issues, it could be just a simple fact that for whatever reason the parents in my experience, a lot of times it was parents who were struggling with their own mental health issues, they were struggling with addictions, and unfortunately the, the kids find it safer on the street than they do in their own home. So I love this idea, at least of, if they're going to be out on the street, to have something to keep them warm with. And I think that's amazing that you're collecting sleeping bags. So can you guys let me know what it is that people need to do? Do they connect with you? Do they connect with the highwaymen? Do they go on Facebook? How is it that they can reach out to you? Well, they can reach out uh, on the, the Highwaymen okay. Facebook page, or they can reach out to myself. Uh, it'd be under Jack Mint and just message me and we'll find ways to uh, come pick it up. And if they, they know anyone that's in need or sees anyone, you know, just send us a little, little blurb and, and say, hey, do you guys mind helping out uh, so-and-so in this area here? And we'll come out and investigate it and, and check it out and, and do the best that we can to help uh, support any anyone that's in need. Whatever the situation is, we'll be there to help out. What was it that made you guys decide that this is what you wanted to do? Because I know you have already done a toy drive. That's correct. And what was it that made you decide, hey, let's do a sleeping bag drive? Uh, driving around downtown and, and coming up here to Barrie and, and seeing the the aftermath of, of COVID and, and the mental health issue and seeing people outside, it, it just it just touches your heart. And you, you look at back and every one of us, yeah, okay, we're, we're, we're going through our own hard times, our own mental health issues, but I'm pretty sure in our hearts we can always find a little bit extra just, just to, to give. Just to give, Absolutely. exactly. The hardest thing for me is knowing that there are people out there, I don't care whether they're young, whether they're older, whatever age, I don't even care what their situation is. You don't know why someone has ended up on the streets. You don't know their backstory. A lot of times you find out they were veterans. They were people who fought for our lives. They fought for our freedom. We have what we have because of these people and they end up on the streets. So I think that it's if people have you know more compassion for those who, who are in need, and not just simply, you know, throwing money at but someone. But actually taking time to go out and do something like what you're doing. Is your plan to go
go out and deliver these or are you delivering them to a central place? How is that going to work? Well, I, our plans with this is to uh, personally go out and personally give it right to that individual, boots on the ground, interact with them and, and, and just show, show support and love. That's, that's basically the way I see it. That's show, awesome. show people that care. somebody who's in need and we're willing to give a hand. And I think that's one of the most important things because we were kind of talking during a little break here and Darren you were talking about um, with your job what you see and what you do so I'd really love for you to tell that story. Yeah basically you know where I work it's it's pretty much the north york end of Toronto and uh, on an everyday basis it, it's getting worse and worse. Um, on the subway lines, the homeless are using the subways as a shelter. Uh, they are basically using the seats as beds, and some of them have hardly anything on their feet. And I saw one gentleman, and it broke my heart, and I basically said, you know what, I'm going to go into my closet, and I'm going to grab all these shoes that I have that I won't wear anymore, and bring them to work, and next time I see somebody who's desperate to need a pair of shoes, Give them a pair of shoes. I said, get rid of the ones you're wearing right now because they're no good. And that's what I'm doing. Like uh, everybody should just lend a hand. I think it's so important. When when I did work at the shelter, one of the things that people were telling me is that people walk past someone who is on the street, and they do really walk past as if they're invisible. That's right. And it is so important for their mental health, for their self-esteem, for um, even just their emotional well-being to have someone just actually walk up and talk to them or you know sit down and have a conversation with them especially when you're doing something like that giving them shoes or giving them a sleeping bag to even have that conversation it makes them feel human we all say you're human beings you're going through something and we want to help but if you don't treat them like human beings how on earth are they going to feel like human beings and they're still going to end up going through the same thing day after day and feeling like they're a nobody and that's the worst feeling in the world. Especially around this time too, you know, this is, this is, this is easy to, to be giving and sharing and uh, you know, it's Christmas. Absolutely. You're right. This time of year is where people feel it the most because they want their family. These people may not have a family, which is probably why they're on the street, or they have a family that they've disconnected with. And for someone, especially a stranger, to come up and be kind to them, it just, I don't know, I've seen people on the streets, they're the most kind people in the world. They think of other people that they're, you know, living on the streets with before they think of themselves. And I'm absolutely amazed at their own kindness, even through everything they're going through. Darren, you were telling me something that actually surprised me, and I didn't realize this because I did work for a youth shelter, and youth were allowed to bring their belongings into the shelter, but you explained to me something completely different when it comes to the shelters downtown. <clears throat> Essentially what it is is that, yeah, if you have something that's carry-on, yeah, you could probably bring it into the shelter, but when you have a cart, like a grocery cart or just a buggy of some sort, some of these places do not allow you to bring it all in because they don't have the room. And uh, inside those carts and buggies, that's their all livelihood. That's their belongings. That's what they have just to survive. Um, some people might look like it doesn't look like much, but to them, it's their whole life. It's their and whole world. The whole yeah. world. And on top of that, I mean, they don't want to leave the outside because then someone else will come by and pick it up and then they are basically have nothing. And you think about it, for us, we lose something simple and we're upset because we've lost that. They have, that is everything that they own. And if it's gone, then they have absolutely nothing. nothing. So that's really hard. And yep. Jack, you were talking about um, another way that they find shelter basically out on the street. And I had no idea. Yeah, you, you'll find them living closely or near garbage bins because if you look at the size of a garbage bin itself you can you can fit four people in one bin and, and even down in, in the subway grates because of the heat of the subway when the subway. trains come in oh, that's you right. see them always laying on top of there and, you and know, that's toxic you're, gas yeah and we're, or you're nice and warm driving in your car you're nice and warm inside your house and these guys are out there with frostbite and, and everything else. Like, it, it, I love what you are doing and I would like to um, ask again uh, what people can do 
Is it, can they donate to you? Do they donate sleeping bags? Do they donate money? How would you prefer for people to connect and donate? You can donate by either purchasing a sleeping bag and, and, and reaching out to us uh, personally or on the Highwaymen uh, Facebook page. Facebook, yep. Or uh, even a gift card. Even if it's a gift card and we have to go purchase it ourselves, we will. We'll, uh, we'll even film it and, and live stream it as we're actually in the store buying it. So even if people decided they want to get together with friends and family and maybe instead of giving doing a gift exchange, buy a sleeping bag on behalf of that family member, that would be fantastic. Or what better thing for women to do, have a little sleepover party and you bring sleeping bags, contact the guys, not to attend the sleepover, <laughs> but contact the guys to come pick up the sleeping bags. So if anybody wants to reach out and you don't know how else to get them, you can always reach out to me and I can help you connect with Jack or Darren or any one of the highwaymen. And let's try to get as many sleeping bags as we can out there to help these people. If you can get ones that are for 40 below, that would be absolutely fantastic. Try your best to get the warmest ones you can find and make it a party, make it a Christmas celebration. Why not? That's my favorite thing to do. And uh, let's get some love out there on the streets for these people. And I have to say, as always, kindness is sexy. And you can't get sexier or kinder than gentlemen out on the street giving back to those who really truly need it. So thank you both Jack and Darren for coming out tonight and going through this with me so that I can spread the word about what you're doing right now, which I think is amazing and touches my heart. Mary Ellen, it's, uh, it's a pleasure uh, coming out here and doing this and, and even to our supporters. So many supporters out there that just follow myself or follow Darren or other members in the club. And within that six month, just that toy drive alone, just showed that, that, that our supporters believe in us. And without our supporters, we're, we're nothing. We're just trying to give back and, and be the support for you. We're your support as you support us. Absolutely. Well, I hope that everyone gets involved and I'm looking forward to seeing any video that shows you guys out there on the street and hopefully I will get to come out with you a couple of times to give back because I would absolutely love to do that. You're more than welcome. Yep. So thank you so much guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great night everyone. Thank Merry you Christmas. so much and Merry Christmas. Kindness is sexy. Kindness is sexy. Kindness. Yes.